Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless we began this sunday morning with a fox news alert a chinese warship coming within 150 yards of a u.s destroyer in the taiwan strait in the latest chinese provocation in the region u.s indo-pacific command slamming their chinese counterparts for maneuvering in an unsafe manner china says it's monitored the two ships but made no mention of the close call this comes days after a chinese fighter jet did its own unnecessary aggressive maneuver by buzzing around an american recon plane all this as the ccp cracks down on activists as today marks the 34th anniversary of the tiananmen square massacre eight people were detained accused of disrupting order in public space. Hong Kong used to host some of the biggest vigils to honor those killed in the infamous pro-democracy demonstration. Instead, this year, a pro-Beijing carnival was held where those vigils used to take place. Scary tensions there in China. Um, this just highlights the need for prudence, judgment, and the right leadership in the United States of America. No, that's exactly right. These provocations are not by accident. Um, the Chinese see their opportunity. You look at Hong Kong. Uh, their takeover there was slow and steady and now complete, which means remembrances of Tiananmen Square are no longer tolerated. Uh, and they want Taiwan uh, across that strait. Those are international waters where that close call occurred. But make no mistake about it, these Chinese warships know exactly where they're going and exactly who's in the who's on the other side. I think seeing what's happening in Hong Kong, that it used to be the place where uh, people honored and, and, you know, commemorated what happened, the bravery of Tiananmen Square, and now there's nothing except pro-CCP <laughs> rallies. This should make everyone wake up. Wherever China goes, this is what will happen. And by the way, we're seeing the Chinification of America here, where protests and dissent and censorship um, are on the rise as well. Something to really keep an eye yeah. on. And, Will, you mentioned leadership and what different leadership means when it comes to foreign crises. Well, Donald Trump was on with Sean Hannity on Thursday night in Iowa, and he talked about why these things are happening. Take a listen. I said, uh, President, don't do it with Taiwan. Don't even think about doing it with Taiwan. He was never going to do it, and now he's circling, circling, ships are circling, planes are flying over the top. 28 bombers last week went over the, right over the middle of it. And a lot of stuff going on. And a lot of this has to do also with the fact that we were so incompetent in the way we left Afghanistan. It was so, I think it was the most, it was the most embarrassing and most incompetent moment in the history of our country. And it, he's right about that. And I think this whole presidential election that we're coming into is going to be a test of strength. Who do we think is strong enough to stand up to what you're seeing right there, which is an army determined to take over? He was right about that. He was right about Ukraine and the invasion mm -hmm. that, you know, under Obama. Yes. Under, under Biden, not under Trump. Foreign, when you look a foreign leader in the eye and say, don't do it because it'll pay, uh, that matters. And we know in multiple instances that that's yes. what Donald Trump did. It absolutely matters. It's the nature of international politics. You, it's not capable of being ignored, as you just pointed out, Pete. What's happened in the last couple of years, yes, during the Obama administration, but in the last couple of years, China in an aggressive stance, Russia on the march in Ukraine, the world senses its moment. Does China have a role in the end times? Many Bible prophecy scholars consider Revelation 16, 12 through 16 to possibly refer to China in the end times. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up, so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons, performing signs, which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame, 
and they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew, Armageddon. This passage predicts a massive climatic conflict known as the Battle of Armageddon. It occurs at the end of the tribulation, after the sixth bowl judgment. At that time, the Euphrates River will be dried up, allowing the kings from the east to invade the Near East and march toward Israel. It is the kings from the east identification that many associate with China. The Chinese army, or a Chinese-led coalition, will take advantage of the removal of a natural barrier and sweep westward to meet up with the forces of the Antichrist. When the end times force from China joins with the armies of the Antichrist, the seventh and final bold judgment will be poured out. The Lord Jesus will return, the most violent earthquake ever will shake the world, and the forces of the Antichrist and the armies of the East will be destroyed as we read in Revelation 16, 17 through 21, and 19, 17 through 21. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as it had not occurred since men were on the earth. Now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every island fled away, and the mountains were not found, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. Revelation 19, 17 through 21. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather together for the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies, gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone, and the rest were killed with the sword, which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds were filled with their flesh. It is impossible to know for sure if the Eastern Confederacy of the end times will include China. However, it seems likely that China will be involved. Recent events have seen a dramatic rise in China's power and influence. These events include the development of enormous military strength, intimidation of Hong Kong, Tibet, Taiwan, and other regions, pursuit of global economic dominance, aggressive rhetoric on the world stage, and the persecution of Chinese Christians. It is not hard to imagine that the kings from the east, who one day march into Israel, will include China. Some people identify another battle in association with China, as we read in Revelation 9:13 through 19. Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year, were released to kill a third of mankind. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them, and thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow, and the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths, for their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails are like serpents, having heads, and with them they do harm. This battle hinges on the mention of an army of 200 million and occasional reports of China's capability of equipping such a vast army. There are a couple of problems with this view. One is that Revelation 9 says nothing of an army from the east. Rather, it speaks of a demonic horde that destroys a third of mankind. In verse 17, the horses these beings ride 
are definitely not normal horses. Also, the Battle of Revelation 9 occurs after the sixth trumpet judgment. The Battle of Revelation 16, involving the kings of the east, occurs after the sixth bowl judgment, which is probably about three and a half years later. In the end times, many nations, likely including China, will try their hand at conquest. Ultimately, their fight will be against God. The seven-year tribulation will be a tumultuous time of warfare, disasters, and divine judgment. But God has it all under control. As we read in Psalm 2, 1 through 12, Why do the nations rage, and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together, against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces, and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath, and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, you shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, be wise, O kings, be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, Repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.